Good evening, cult members, and welcome to Pop Culture Cult. I'm Sean. I'm Janice. And this is going to be our light spoiler review of Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. Right. Not super spoilery. (laughs) And I say that because it's Jay and Silent Bob. I mean, really, where you're going to spoil. It's everything you think it's going to (laughs) be. But there's some stuff that happens that I don't want to spoil it because, you know. Right. There is a little bit of... um there is some different, there's a bit of a different spin on it. Yes. Uh, but I do say light spoilers because I want to talk about the scene at the end, kind of generally. Okay. Because of what it means. Okay. Um, so we went and saw it at the uh, Phantom, 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 Phantom event. Um, event last night. And um, I want to say... Uh, this might be my second favorite Kevin Smith movie now. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Dogma is always going to be my favorite uh, <clears throat> because okay. of Alanis Morissette is God. That's right. <laughs> and that actually might be a spoiler for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> might be a spoiler for this movie. Um, I love, uh, they did this with Jay and Silent Bob uh, Strike Back. Uh, and the meta-ness of, of everything that Kevin Smith does. Yes. Um, now, we're going to be honest with everything that we're going to point out here. Um, we love Kevin Smith, but maybe not Kev- Kevin Smith's um, like like directorial stuff. Like We're not deep in the VSU universe and know every word to every movie. Right. Uh, it's been a really uh, long time since I've seen... Mall rats or chasing Amy or clerks. Clerks. We had clerks too for a while. We had strike back for a while, um, but we weren't watching them, so we we sold them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, clerks too, and dogma are are my favies. Kind of fa- yeah, favorites in whatever order you choose to put them in right right <laughs> one so, a and b <laughs> so we uh, the reason we like him is because he likes a lot of the stuff that we like in his pod in, in his um fat man beyond podcast and hollywood babylon podcast and his um hosting of the imdb boat and, and like like his pop culture stuff is i think more of what we like and to be honest we just like to hear him talk yes we did go see him Live and in concert, yeah, uh, a yeah. couple years ago, last year, uh, last May, last it was May, right yeah. after his. I think heart it was attack. the first or second show after yeah. like coming yeah. back. By the way, if you didn't know Kevin Smith had a heart attack, <laughs> he will tell you repeatedly <laughs> in this movie that he had a heart attack. He totally leans into it. <laughs> it's so funny because he does that on Fat Man Beyond too, where he's like, "Remember that time where I had a heart attack and." <laughs> And Arden's over there going, yes, Kev, we know. <laughs> um, we've gotten off track. Uh, <clears throat> this movie is deep into the lore of the Kevin Smith view askew universe. And, uh, and th- like everyone who's ever been attached to something in a Kevin Smith movie was in this movie yes. at some point in time. Yes. That's not what the movie was about, though. No. It, the movie is kind of veiled with this idea of going to Chronic Con to stop the making of Blood Man and Chronic. Two. Blood Man V. B. V. Chronic, uh, which was a reboot, remake, sequel. Mix squeak squeakwool <laughs> squeak what, what did they call they called it something like that they have this running joke about what is a reboot versus a remake versus a sequel versus a squeakwool squeakwool and it was <laughs> it, it, it there is several running jokes throughout the entire thing mm-hmm. and that's one of the one of the ones that i just every time they brought it up i just giggled under my breath <laughs> there was some ones that they had running jokes where i was straight out crying laughing <laughs> uh, um but even though it's kind of veiled with this concept of stopping this movie the movie is really about kevin 
coming to terms with his own, his in his own mortality and fatherhood. Yes. And and wrapping that up with wrapping that up and having Jay do it and have Jay be the father to Harley. This is not like spoilers. There's all stuff that Kevin talked has talked about in all kinds of different podcasts because he can't keep okay. his mouth shut. Um <laughs> Because <clears throat> he was super excited about this movie, and so he, um, the idea of of fatherhood and mortality and and being comfortable with yourself and being comfortable with your like all of that was really what kind of was the underlying message. At least that's what I saw from it. Yeah, there was that, and I think there was also um, kind of a inside, like um, inside. Hollywood yeah. joke. I don't know that it was a joke. It was more like a jab at um, kind of the merchandising that happens to people, to stars, yeah. and yeah. kind of the theft of their identity <laughs> yeah. and who they are, and, and then turning that into toys and cons. and Which is funny because... <clears throat> He has like tons of toys and yeah, and yeah. you know posters and like he like he's in the space so he's able to kind of uh, very Mel Brooksy kind of poke fun at the bear that he is part of. Yeah, yeah, but and but there's also some kind of there's some theft of that that it happens in the movie too that is I'm sure a point to someone somewhere. Oh, that, oh you yeah, know. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, the premiere event we went to, they had like a five minute, um, six minute intro that J that Jay and Kevin did, and then after they had um, a post credits, like during the credits and stuff like that, they uh, ran some extra shots and stuff like that, which was really cool. And then they did a post credit scene, um, uh, telling a really good joke if you know like the whole clerk storyline and the, and like yeah. it was it was like because this this movie was supposed to be clerks three they were going to make clerks three it was going to happen they have a script for it um and then things happened and they ended up not doing it and kev um instead of making the that movie actually took it to um this playhouse that's in his hometown and did a live read of it with a bunch of the guys from the new jersey and helped raise money for the playhouse and Kev even said, like, uh, I wouldn't make this movie now. Like, the, the Clerks 3, what I was trying to say in that movie, I wouldn't make now because, you know, my life is different. And so yeah. it doesn't make any sense. So that's yeah. what turned into <clears throat> Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Yeah. And uh, I just, I, I, like, I was happy to go see it and, you know, kind of have, you know, poke fun and stuff like that. But, like, like there's some, like, heart to this movie. And there's some <laughs> seriousness to this movie. And then there's some straight out like oh my god that's awkwardly awesome and <laughs> like harley quinn smith um like some of the stuff she says and does in this movie is like like only she's the one going to be able to say and do this stuff yeah. without yeah and and it's still funny to sit there and say okay your dad wrote these lines for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> And there's one line where she says, I hate Kevin Smith. He puts his daughter in everything. everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's called nepotism. <laughs> and then there's one, not, it's not really a spoiler, but there's one scene where they're sitting. So uh, Harley's been calling Jay and, and Kevin, her two dads, for a in, while now. In real life. In real life. In real life. And uh, they're, so they're sitting there. And Jason. Jason. <laughs> you keep calling him Jay and, and Kevin. Or Kev. Or Jason and Silent Bob. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. One's the real name. Jason one's the... <laughs> and Kevin um, uh, are sitting with Harley in the middle, and Harley's doing like turning, looking at Silent Bob because Kevin Smith is on stage, right? And Silent Bob is sitting next to her, and she's like doing the whole back and forth, like up to the stage and looking at Silent Bob, looking at the stage, and looking at Silent Bob, and she finally turns and, and Bob kind of like puts his hands up like what and she grabs him by the face and says you look like kevin smith and he's like mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just it's just this funny like 
super super meta joke yeah like within the whole universe like it's just it was there was a whole bunch of like one-liners and different things and like all the guest stars and and all the cameos yes. and like Tons Kev- of people in it kevin just called people up and said i'm doing a thing show up if you can yeah and and then and then um uh it's not really a spoiler because it was on Instagram because uh, Chris Helmsworth can't keep his mouth shut. Um, <laughs> he like flew to New Orleans on a weekend to film his stuff like on his own. And like, so it was like, it was like just stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then there was the last scene I want to talk about real quick before we score it. Um, somebody was interviewing Ben Affleck uh, and the interviewer said, hey, have you talked to Kevin about being in the reboot movie yeah and he's like i haven't i haven't talked to kevin in several years i'd love to be in it but he hasn't contacted me and then kevin talked about this and said um i thought ben was mad at me and so um i didn't contact him to be in the movie and um his representation his agent publicist whatever contacted my publicist and said, is there a part for Ben in the movie? And Kev called Ben and they talked over the phone for like two hours. And Kev went back to the, the, the trailer that night and wrote a whole scene. And the whole scene is the, the last scene in the movie and is super poetic once you you know that like they were, I won't say estranged, but not you know not talking to each other and stuff and how how like poignant that conversation is and how important it is for the overall story that he's telling plus he's talking to his friend and he's all but it's kevin from it's uh ben's character from mall rats yeah you know and so there's like oh it's no from chasing amy chasing amy sorry chasing well he's in mall rats too they're yeah but it's his character it's his character from chasing amy and uh so that scene was just like i was like I'm not crying at a stupid, silly stoner <laughs> movie, right? Um, but overall, I think I liked it a lot. I did too. There was a couple times where stuff fell flat, but it was definitely better than Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I mean, I laughed way more oh, in yeah. this one than I did in, in that one. So, And I think some of those jokes um, are for the super deep. I don't know. I don't feel like anybody really got them in our yeah, in our theater, theater yeah but yeah and some of them were just you know uh, just not my what i find funny but uh, overall yeah i thought yeah. it was good yeah. uh, jason muse acts his butt off yeah jason muse and harley quinn um are both um like i won't say amazing because i try to save that but are really like give them other roles in other yeah. movies kind of yeah. thing yeah um uh, but Jason Mewes really showed that hey, he could do stuff. Now I'm really interested to see his movie that he directed, yeah, um, and and, uh, and starred in stuff. So uh, score, um, I'm going to give it a three five. I had a good time. It was fun. I would probably buy it. I was just going to ask if you would buy it. Yeah, and, and probably. Stuff. It'd probably be like clerks too right we'd watch it for a while and then be like okay and now i'm done yeah <laughs> yeah um the after credit stuff that they did they did a bunch of like um on set interviews jason got a mic and a camera and went yeah. around was introducing like stand-ins and producers yeah. and line producers yeah. and like that the was the thing with rosera dawson went a little long but it um, did i think that would be cooler on the dvd yeah than, yeah than, uh, i'm also a 3.5 um for all the same reasons that we've talked about like again i would love to watch this again maybe catch some of the meta jokes that we missed yeah uh but overall i think it was a, a, a absolute home run and they're on tour with it so that's yeah. the cool thing is even though we got to see it on a premiere night um with a bunch of the extras uh Jason and Kevin are on tour with it, and you can go to, uh, uh, they're going like 66 dates, and you could watch the movie with them, and then they could do a Q&A afterwards. Yep. Now I'm really interested to see it again when they come, I think they're coming to the Phoenix area in December, so oh, I'm wondering okay. if we should see if we can get tickets to Maybe. it or not. So that's our thoughts and our rating of Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. What did you guys think? Please let us know in the comments. If you want, let's, let's, let us know what role you think Jason Mew should do next and maybe what 
movie Kevin should do next, like maybe a podcast movie, because that joke wasn't made in the in the movie like 17 <laughs> times. Um, so like this video, leave us a comment, subscribe to the channel, help us out on Patreon, and we're on all the social media stuff. All that stuff is in the description down below. And until next time, if we don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.